Chapter 8, Understanding and Managing Conflict Section. What can cause dialectical tensions? Relational dialectics is defined by constant change. Relational dialectics is a perspective that views interpersonal relationships as constantly changing rather than stable and that revolves around how relational partners manage tensions. The first dialect that Baxter and Montgomery identified was one of integration versus separation. Another way of thinking about this is autonomy versus connection. In the early stages of the relationship, we tend to spend as much time as possible with another person. There's also that tension between spending time with them and spending time with yourself, that autonomy versus connection. The second dialectic was stability and change. After time, novelty may wear off, and one partner may try to change the other. When relational partners make plans to be together, the plans reinforce the relationship and begin to establish a routine. Stability and change can be thought of as predictability versus novelty. The idea of, I want some mystery, but I also want some predictability, some stability. Expression and privacy can also be thought of as openness versus closeness. What do we choose to share with others? What do we not want to share with others? Conflict is an express struggle that occurs between two people who are interdependent and who perceive incompatible goals, scarce rewards and resources, or a climate of competition from the other person. Preview, there are eight types of interpersonal conflict, constructive, destructive, pseudo-conflict, simple conflict, ego conflict, symbolic displacement, serial arguments, and irresolvable conflict. The first is constructive conflict. Constructive conflict is conflict characterized by cooperation and dealing with differences. It helps build new insights and patterns in a relationship. In constructive conflict, people change. People interact to learn versus protect themselves. People don't stay stuck in that conflict. This kind of conflict often enhances self-esteem. People are focused on relationships versus individuals, and they're primarily cooperative. Destructive conflict is characterized by a lack of cooperation in dealing with differences. It dismantles relationships without restoring them. Pseudo-conflict is conflict stemming from a lack of understanding. It's literally false conflict. Simple and ego conflict are different. Simple conflict is conflict over differences in ideas, definitions, perceptions, or goals. Ego conflict is conflict based on personal issues in which people attack each other's self-esteem. Simple conflict is more like argumentativeness. Ego conflict is more like verbal aggression. In argumentativeness, people attack other people's issues. In verbal aggression, people attack other people personally. Symbolic displacement is a phenomenon that occurs when people engage in one conflict through or in place of another symbolically related one, or when a participant's behavior is an expression of displaced or unconscious meaning. Serial arguments are argumentative episodes focused on the same issue that occur at least twice. Irresolvable conflict is a conflict in which one or both parties deem the conflict impossible to resolve. Preview. Relationships involve power dynamics. There are complementary relationships, symmetrical relationships, and parallel relationships. In complementary relationships, one partner willingly and continuously cedes power. For example, we're having Chinese food tonight, and we're going to have Italian tomorrow night. Symmetrical relationships are characterized by similar control behaviors. Partners compete to dominate each other or both relinquish control at the same time to the other person to avoid making decisions. A good example is, I don't know where you want to go eat, so I'm just going to let you decide. Parallel relationships are characterized by 
how power continually shifts from one partner to the other. A good example of the food conversation might be, tonight we'll have Italian, tomorrow we'll have Chinese. Assertive versus aggressive communication. Assertive communication takes a listener's feelings and rights into account, while aggressive communication is self-serving and does not take a listener's feelings and rights into account. There are three kinds of conflict styles, non-confrontational, confrontational, and cooperative. First, we'll discuss non-confrontation. The non-confrontational style involves backing off, avoiding conflict, or giving in to the other person. The confrontational style is a win-lose approach to conflict management in which one person wants to control and to win at the expense of the other. The cooperative style is a conflict management style in which conflict is viewed as a set of problems to be solved rather than a competition in which one person wins and the other loses. The cooperative style separates people from problems, focuses on shared interests, generates many options to solve problems, and bases decisions on objective criteria. In any conflict scenario, it's important to manage emotions. Here are some tips for managing emotions. Select a mutually acceptable time and place to discuss the conflict. Plan your message. Carefully monitor nonverbal messages. Remember that nonverbal messages often leak and we're unaware of that leakage. Avoid personal attacks. Use self-talk. It's also important to manage information in all kinds of conflict. To manage information, clearly describe the conflict producing events, own your statements by using I instead of you, use effective listening skills, and check your understanding. It's important to manage goals and the problem in any conflict scenario. In managing goals, be sure to identify your goals, your partner's goals, and where mutual goals overlap. Manage the problem. Resist developing solutions until everyone fully understands the precise nature of the problem and all goals. The more possible solutions you identify and consider, the greater the likelihood of success. Systematically discuss the pros and cons of the possible solution together. Here's where we've been. We discussed the stages of relational development. We discussed dialectical tensions. We discussed and defined conflict. We talked about the eight types of conflict. We talked about how power impacts conflict and relational types. We discussed the difference between assertive and aggressive communication. And we answered the questions, how do I manage emotions, information, goals, and the problem?